Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I show you how we can design a soap bottle like this in Shaper 3D. We will start this exercise by creating a very interesting sketch setup and then via refinements create various body design studies. You can see from the first to the second to the third some of the details started to change just a little bit. And then we will go ahead and slice the bottle and create then all the necessary and functional required details like openings, tubes, material thickness, bring everything into the visualization tool to explore materials, take a look at the dif different ways how to explain a design, and then also make a, an excourse into the new web viewer so you could present your work to somebody who is far away or doesn't have Shaper 3D yet. And with all that said, let's do it. So we will start with a new design. Let's make sure we go to top view. Millimeter is our unit system, and we have all the sketch elements turned on. Then let's go to sketch and we will start with an ellipse. I click at the origin, click upwards and click to the side and quickly sketch out an ellipse. There we are. Then the width is 35 millimeters and the depth is 28. Very good. Now in 3D view, this sketch, I would like to make a copy 120 millimeters off the ground. So I can exit the sketch, click copy, click on the top arrow and type in 120. There we are, very good. If I click on the ellipse, then we can change the dimension. Now the depth, is actually 38 and the width now is 45 millimeters. Very good. I need another copy. I have nothing selected. I can also go to transform, select move, then select the ellipse, click copy, click on the up arrow, type in 120 and enter and done. This ellipse, we're going to change a lot. The width is actually 10 millimeters and the depth 28. So very narrow. Very nice. What we have now is a bottom, a mid and a top profile. And we can create a loft body. There we are. This body looks pretty good. However, if we go into a front view and we pay attention to it, we notice that the top and the bottom ends are kind of flat. Only in the center is this nicely curved. So this body is not ideal. Let's delete it. What we need, however, is guide rails from the sides and the front. So let's go to the front. These guide rails are very easy to make so we can create a curve network. Click sketch. Then we will select this fit point spline. And look at this, there are magenta points. These are the snapping points where this sketch intersects the ellipses. So I click on each intersection point and right click to stop. Even in 3D view, I can actually quickly sketch this. There we are. Let's go to a side view. And I do the same. Right click and there the last sketch. And right click. Beautiful. So if I now select the three profiles and then select the four rails and click loft, go to a front view, you can really see how beautiful this works out. Even more interesting is instead of modeling it this way. Let's go to tool loft, select these profiles and then click on the rail. 
you can really see how the surface is being pulled to these rails. Very good. Okay, so this is actually now our raw body. Let's hide this for a moment. We'll go to a side view. Go to sketch, go to line. I will use simply the grid to draw here a line, nicely centered left and right. And then this line I will lock so it doesn't move. Then I will draw another line, maybe to there and a line to there. So roughly 203 millimeters up there. Very good. And now when I zoom in on top, I would like to have a nice curved top part. So let's go to spline and we select the control point. Click, 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 and click, right click. As you can see, the spline is not flowing nicely into the line. To do this, we can select the spline and the line and select tangent constraint. I will pull this one here just to show you what happens. You see how the point actually was aligned to be tangent to this line. Now everything is a little bit irregular. So let's at the center on the grid create a line. This line now we lock and then I can select two pairs of points, click symmetry and add a symmetry constraint. And let's do the same here. Pay attention to what happens now. You see, all the points are symmetrical now. Pretty good. Now and then we can sculpt this a little bit as we want. Very good. Okay, let's go into a 3D view again. And this profile I extrude and then move back. Let's show our previous loft body. You see they intersect which means I can select both bodies and then go to intersect and find actually the intersection volume. Pretty good and pretty easy, as you can see. We take a look in the front. We can study this. Yeah, this looks good at the beginning, but what I do not like is, for example, how here at the end, this is kind of like a little bit too curved and the bottom, this is too pointy. And also the top, actually, I would like to be more arced. So let's select this body and then we move this to one side, 200 millimeters, just as a copy. There we are. And let's hide this for the moment. I will go back to the side view. I will select this sketch and then move this a little bit like this so that this arc is now more like an ellipse. And you see how the surface actually really goes much more accelerated to the top. I can even show the previous geometry because it's at a different plane as an underlay. Very good. So let's create actually these two bodies one more time. There is the loft body. Very good. I will hide this one. And then let's go to the extrude command. And this new body we extrude bring this back. There we are. And do this one more time. Intersect. Very good. Let's go to the front view, show the other model and look at the difference. This looks so much better here now. On the bottom, got a little bit wider. Okay, so this problem we solved, not necessarily the top because this is very linear and this is linear because well we just do an extrusion of this profile so what we need is actually a different body that cuts this so we'll select this body move this over 100 to there very good and i will create a new folder 
in these two bodies, I move into this folder, right click, rename folder, and call this study. There, very good. So what I need to do is, I'm going to quickly rebuild this body here one more time. There we are, hide this. And then along this line and this spline and this line, I would like to sweep and convex profile. So check this out. We go to add construction plane and then we will select perpendicular at two edge. This edge perpendicular at the start point. There, very good. When we select this plane, which is, as you can see now, angled, click on new sketch. There we have the snap point where this plane intersects with this line. If I zoom out a little bit more, I can draw here a nice line, 100 millimeters, 25 up, and then on the left side, 25 up because of the snapping targets. This is now perfect. And then let's go to spline, fit point from the left to there, to the right and right click. This is a very gentle arc. So I will push this further inwards. And the more this one arcs, the more the surfaces which we are going to cut will arc. Before we can cut, however, we need to sweep this profile along these three sketch elements. Sweep, there we are. This is actually very tight here at the corner. Oh, that is okay. We can get away with this. This is really the important surface. So check this out. We will select now this body and then this body and say subtract. And look at this. How beautiful is this cut? If I go to the front view, you can really see how this is nicely arced. Very good. Click done. And even the bottom part is actually rounder. So if we compare this, you see, really good. Perfect. So I think um, at this point we could say, yeah, this is actually really good. So our initial modeling for the bottle body is actually done. Before we continue, let's actually clean up our design. The structure is a little bit chaotic. I'll make a new folder. Let's rename this folder as sketches and then all the sketches I put into this folder and bring this one down to there. Very good. My study objects, I would like to move to the left by 100 millimeters. And then here, my final piece, I make a copy and move it also 100 millimeters to the left. And then this copy, I move into the studies folder. And then I can hide everything. Very good. So you see now everything is nice and clean. So when we zoom into this bottle now, the next task, what I would like to do is start slicing the bottle horizontally into the cap which also has a lid, so a second slice and the bottle. But I would actually cut these edges. So before we do this, a good exercise is rounding these edges. We can play with the value. Five millimeters feels very good for the base. And then we can take a look at the top, slide this and two millimeters Feel good for that. Very good, perfect. Now I would like to have from the top down 20 millimeters, millimeters and down 20 millimeters. So how can we actually slice this? That's easy. I will from the bottom because this is a flat 
plane, create a construction plane. Straight up, then I zoom in and I move this one up till it does not intersect with the bottle anymore. There we are. And if I want, I can also clean this up a little bit and say here, 236 millimeters. Very good. Or maybe move this up by half a millimeter. There. So this is a little bit eyeballed, but this works actually really good. Also be mindful, injection molded parts, they have a lot of irregularities. So this plane now, I actually moved down minus 20 millimeters. So this is now the position for the first cut where we actually slice the, the cap or the lid. So let's select the whole body, select the plane, and then we say split body. There we are. So now this, we move down another negative 20 millimeters, and then the base we split with this plane. Very good. And this plane, I just move into the sketch folder, so it's gone. Very good. Now that you see, there is actually our bottle. And give this a name. This maybe we call cap. And then this we can call lid. Or give those names which make sense to you. Very nice. Now at one point we also want to core these elements out, also have the tubes inside. So what will be the easiest one to start is actually the lid. So you see the outer edges are rounded. So now we can select the plane on the bottom and then select the shell command. We can do a one millimeter shell. And beautifully, you see, it creates also all the inside details for us automatically. Very good. This one is done. Let's go to the cap. So when the lid sits on the cap, right where my mouse is, we want to have a cavity for a nail to poke under the lid and move it up. So we don't have this cavity yet. So this is something we're going to build first before we then do the same thing like with the lid and core the bottom part out. So I'm going to select the top face, go to sketch, and then we can use the arc. I will use the grid here to do something that is nice and even left and right. And there is my arc, very good. To do a quick measurement, I simply draw a line here in between two millimeters. Yeah, that is that is good. So these two points I can select and lock because now I can move and make this bigger or smaller. Very easy. Now if I zoom in now and then here draw a line. Now this is 1.5. Looks nearly like two millimeters. Okay. So if we would cut this open, we can see with the lid, it would be a little bit under the lid opening. So there's like the small opening. Very good. Okay, this works good. So you see prototype is actually really easy. To continue, let's add another arc to the outside. This one can be much bigger. And here comes now the interesting trick why direct modeling in Shaper is really so good. This um, profile, I will now extrude into the body, maybe really deep, and then I say new body, okay? And then this face, I will move simply backwards. And based on how far I move this back, you see, I get a different cut section or intersection there. So this looks really good. The majority of this face will be cut. Beautiful. So from this body, 
I will remove this body via subtract. No uh, originals we want to keep. There we are, very good. This sketch plane, we don't need anymore. Let's put this into that folder. And look at this, this looks actually pretty, pretty decent, yeah. This edge we can round four millimeters, looks good. And then this sharp edge and this one too, 0.25 millimeter. We add a nice detail and look, this tiny fillet really makes this look more realistic. Very good. Okay, so the front detail is done and now we can work on the opening for the fluid to go through. First, now no, we have to shell the bottom one millimeter. There we are. Very good. And when I select this inner face now, looking from the bottom, click sketch. You see now that actually it zooms right onto it. We can go to circle. At the origin again, I draw a circle five millimeters. There we are. And six millimeters. And then the center point I lock, very good. The smaller profile, that is actually when we extrude this up, that cuts the hole and then the bigger um, profile, I move this up, but then say union. So we join this extrusion to the body. Now the, the shell has a thickness of one millimeter. 2.7 means this extrudes up 1.7 millimeters. You see when I move this up and down, how this actually changes. Two millimeter will probably be sufficient. And in case this neck is too thin, we can now, thanks to direct modeling, select the cylinder outer face and change this to seven millimeters. We make this bigger. Let's give this a nice rounding. This looks good. Perfect. So upper part is done. Now we can do the next, which are inside. I'm going to click on the circle that activates the sketch again. Go to the circle tool and I will create one circle, 20 millimeters. This is now where the neck or the tube coming from the bottle has its inner diameter. Then we can do 22, like a thicker one. This is now everything for what goes to the bottle. And now I need inside and outside also a sleeve that slides over it. So here, 18 millimeters and then 24. Very good. Again, this is for the bottle. This is for the cap. I select these two profiles and I extrude those down 10 millimeters. Very good. This looks really, really nice. We can now actually turn the cap off, turn the bottle on, zoom in. And then here, this is what is for the bottle. We can bring this one down. It cuts into, and we will say union, join it to it and keep it at this for the moment. Very good. So we go to a front view, quickly turn the section view on. And there you can see how this sits on it. So easy. Okay, let's turn the section view off. I will turn the cap on, turn the lid on, because what now we would like to do is select this inner profile, extrude this up and extrude it so far up so it penetrates through the lid and switch the command to union. So we have this extrusion there. This sticks out, no big problem. Select the two faces, press delete, and thanks direct modeling, it's gone. This is actually a very solid piece. So what we can do here is use the shell command 
and see can we shell this to the inside. Shelling command is a very complicated task. So for example here, 0.4 etc. works really good. This is also fine when there should be a really thin um, uh, surface, but I will actually do something different, not with the shell command. However, I will actually select the sketch and do another offset to the inside by one millimeter. Very good. And then this inner element, I move up and check out what I'm going to do now. I'm hiding the sketch. I'm selecting this flat face. Then I select this curved face and say replace face. And what's happening is when I zoom in, you can see now that this flat inner face got moved up and follows perfectly this curved face. Beautiful. That's a tiny detail I really like to make sure this works good. And we can still afterwards adjust actually these values too. See, we're not limited. When this has to rotate into the opening, we might want to round this a little bit. Very good. There you can see, oh, there it sits inside. Beautiful. So lit and cap are actually done. Let's take a look at what we do with the bottle. So the cap can actually slide onto the, the bottleneck, but then it can rotate. So we want to prevent this rotation. What I will do in this case is, see this face, I will move down by maybe half a millimeter, not too much. There, and then when we take a look at the bottle, you can see how this intersects with the bottle. Both bodies I selected, then I go subtract. This time, however, say I would like to keep the removed body. In my case here, I have to change the order. There we are. So magenta plus, that means that's the piece something is removed from and blue minus, that means that is the geometry that's being removed. And when we zoom in here, there you can see actually this stepping. Click done, turn off the cap, and there we are. You see, that's how easy I generated this detail. No sketches, simply direct modeling. Very good. Select this edge, 0.25 for the rounding to make this look nice and good. Then we can select this edge, 0.25. Very good. Again, this is kind of like a, a nice detail when we then go into the visual you will see this. What is left is actually now the shelling, uh, the inside part. To help the software, do a little trick. You see, I removed the inner um, faces, then I select the top face and simply say, here, you shell me two millimeters. Very good. Now we have a material thickness of two millimeters. And this is actually a tick to big. No problem. I can make this 19. One second. Uh, yeah. And actually, not 19. I should have calculated this better. And this has to be 20 millimeters. And there we are. Perfect. And you see how I'm matching actually the neck to the sketch. This perfectly lines up, this one, there. Very good. If I go to a front view, there we are, turn all this on. One more time, a section view. This is brilliant. This works really good. Amazing. Okay. This sketch I can also now put to there. And at this point, we have actually created our design with the, the lid, cap, and the bottle, including details for fitting and shelling.
and we're ready to put this into the visualizer. To start the visualization tool, I click on it, and there we are. Now we have actually our normally shaded body. There you can see already the nice highlights and shadows of these fillets we created. We can give the lid and the cap a polycarbonate plastic material. There we are. Then let's click on change and then we can change this color. I have, for example, the hex number right now that is 0077 AD and enter. Very good. So it is actually kind of like a, a dark blue. Very good. Then let's go to environment. Select, for example, this colored mood. This is actually really nice. Very good. And then when we go to gradient mood, we have a nice gradient in the background. That is also good. Click on the adjustment. We can rotate the light a little bit. It's actually really nice. And then for the background color, we will go with 7AC1T2 and enter. So it's a nice bluish waterly uh, like tone. Click done. Very good. And Mercurio, the bottle is kind of grayish. That's not very attractive. So we can now decide what type of material would we like to give for uh, that one. So for example, we can use the polypropylene material. There we are. Then this we can change to something more whitish. Uh, be careful actually that we cannot really produce a perfect white material. So maybe something more yellowish or so, or like a blue white. There we are. So I will go here to this blue and I can drag this along to tint this just a little bit. Very good. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. We can also swap out materials. So for example, here, this polycarbonate glossy transparent change. How would this look when I will select a glossy transparent polypropylene? Oh, look at this. I can see much more now in it. So you see, it's actually really nice and easy to adjust materials. I have two bodies. If I now click on the polypropylene one more time and change the color for the material, you see it, it adjusts the material on both parts because both parts use the same material. Beautiful. Now to create really interesting presentations, um, you see also here we have a beautiful highlight on the fillet, nice highlights on the glossy surface. It really comes down to the position. Do I look really from the front, from the bottom up, from the top down, kind of like to the side. I'm painting kind of like with light. So I feel this is actually a good look. Then I can go back to environment, go to the gradient mood and further play with it. I can increase the light, I can decrease the light, and I can rotate the shadow, kind of like the shadow, or basically I rotate the light. And by this, I pay attention to what nice shading do I get on the bottle. For example, now with the light coming from the right, I really see nicely the structure of the material on the front. Oh, I do it this way. Now the light comes from the left side. But then I don't really have these highlights there like I have here because this is really interesting what's going on there. And then moving my view a little bit, trying to play and make this look really nice. Very good. Then, then we can click on capture and that basically then creates an image of this for a presentation.
We can also actually share our design via the web viewer. So we can, can click on share, then create link. Then the software will create online a link with this product in it and we can share it. I will open this in the browser. And there we have it. Very good. Now we can just rotate around. We can, by the way, also change designs. So for example, the material, I would like for the bottle to be a little bit more bluish. So slightly like this. And then this change I can publish again. So the same link will be the same, but it will once this publishing is finished, it will show the new material choice. And there we are, you see, we adjusted the color. And with this, we have reached the end of this demonstration. I hope everything that I showed you will be informative and support you in your design and visualization endeavor. Have a good day. Bye-bye.